join together in prayer. <clears throat> Precious God, we thank you for your spirit, your love, your guidance, your care. Precious God, we thank you for being the shepherd that we look towards that guides us to places of peace and comfort. Be with us today, God. Nothing happens unless it's sparked by you. Amen. Amen. It is a truly fearful moment for me to share with you on Mother's Day. I will share with you, there is no greater weekend, there is no weekend that I hold more fear in preaching than on Mother's Day. So there's this thing, and it almost, it almost always happens. I preach on Mother's Day, I go, I shake hands at the door as everybody goes out, and the first person will come up to me and they say, Pastor, you talk too much about Mother's Day today. And they walk out and I start to think about, okay, well, what did I do too much and how will I work on that next year? Two people down the line, the next person comes over and they say, Pastor, don't you know it's Mother's Day today? Why didn't you say anything about Mother's Day? So then I got to figure out, so did I say too much? Did I say too little? It's a very scary day, and there's a reason why it's a very scary day for me as a pastor to preach. Because the actions of mothering are the most important in a person's life. The actions of mothering sets a path, sets a tone, it sets an importance, it sets standards, it sets expectations, the actions of mothering. So I would like to help you, and Crystal has already been saying this. I want to help you say it too. I want you to say the phrase, Happy Mothering Day. Please say that, Happy Mothering Day. <laughs> We're going to get into that in the sermon. We're going to talk about the importance of mothering actions. But I have to share with you a little bit about a history of a lady named Ann Jarvis. Do you know who Ann Jarvis is? If you do, don't give it away. Marie, don't give it away. You'll ruin the whole sermon. <laughs> we'll get out of here early. We'll get lunch early. If you if you break, if you give it away. <laughs> Ann Jarvis. Ann Jarvis was a very active United Methodist. Very much in the early years of her life, she started to work towards a day of recognition for the female leaders within churches. She worked very hard to have a day that pointed out the Sunday school teachers, the Sunday school superintendents, the dear ladies that set up the social time. In her time period, there was not such a thing as female pastors, but through time that has changed and her efforts have become one that recognizes very specific female pastors, female associate pastors, female visitation leaders. She wanted to have a day that gave a voice to everyone within the Christian movement that displayed the actions of mothering. She worked very hard. One of the groups that she helped build, one of the groups that she helped create because of the importance of building a voice, building a recognition of female leadership within the Christian setting still exists today. Unfortunately, they're not meeting this month, but one of those groups that she helped create was the UMW. And giving a place of acknowledgement of female leadership within the Christian setting, she worked very hard for it. And Jarvis worked so hard for it that it became known outside of the church. And people began to see the importance of those who show these mothering actions that it developed a day of celebration. And through Ann Jarvis's work, not just for the church, but for all culture, we celebrate Mother's Day. Ann Jarvis's work created what has become known as Mother's Day. Her original intentions were that of displaying acknowledgement and a celebration of those who give 
mothering actions in the setting of the church. What are mothering actions? Mothering actions are those of comfort. Mothering actions are those of sympathy. Mothering actions are those of being a provider and a caregiver. There's so many different ways that the actions of motherhood touch individual lives and transform lives. Just in the song that Jen picked for us today in our celebration of music, it's the acknowledgement of the power that a name can have that produces the feelings of comfort and care. One and all, say it with me once again, Happy Mothering Day. I want to talk about the importance of Mothering Day because there's other conversations that I have as a pastor in the reception line leaving church that makes Mother's Day a scary day to preach. It almost seems like a no-brainer. I should be able to say, take all of the actions of motherhood, the mothering actions, and apply them to the presence of God. The mothering nature of God. And celebrate how that through the presence of motherhood, we have the presence of a divine love that comforts through all things, that cares through all things, that transforms lives because they are always present, always there, always a rock to transform lives. And then I have the conversations in the reception line. Pastor, thank you for giving me that image of God. I love my mother so much. And every time that you talked about the idea of motherhood and combined it with God, it gave me this beautiful image of this beautiful lady that cared for me every single day of my life. I get to hear those responses. Then... I also get the responses of, Pastor, if God is like my mom, I don't want God. <laughs> Unfortunately, people are given a noun, but they don't live out the verb. If you remember last week's sermon. We have some dear souls that have been given a title, but they don't understand the actions that go along with that idol title. And unfortunately, Mother's Day is not always a day that's celebrated. So it becomes hard to talk about that because we have a loving image of a caregiver that many of us celebrate, which comes again, the importance of remembering the phrase, say it with me again, Happy Mothering Day. I learned as I was trying to figure out the conundrum of what to do on Mother's Day when I have the unfortunate opportunity to preach, how do I still proclaim an unending redemptive love even for people who don't have that direct image? How do I still do that? There's a practice in the European countries and they don't call it Mother's Day. It is Mothering Day. The concept of the individual that shows care, that shows support, that shows comfort, that shows compassion, that shows understanding, and the reality that that person is not always a person that birthed us. Even within fractured family relationships, there still exists an individual that has the opportunity to be the mothering presence for an individual. It's why Ann Jarvis started the efforts that became Mother's Day. There were so many orphans that were abandoned. There were so many people trying to restructure their lives because of fractured family relationships. And they turn to the church to find that image. And either through a Sunday school teacher, 
through a dear friend that sat next to them in the pews, through a person that took a moment to just sit side by side with an individual to ask them how they were doing. These images of mothering open doors for a place of comfort and care. It's not always the person that gave birth, but God still brings into our lives those who are shepherds of motherhood that open a place to find that we are truly special. I want you to think about the mentors in your lives. And many times those mentors are our parents. I am very blessed to say that Mike Davis, my dad, is one of my heroes. I'm blessed to say that. And I'm blessed to say that God has placed in my life so many different shepherding people who displayed mothering actions that have helped me be where I'm at today. The individuals that have been the shepherds of my life that David read about in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The blessing of knowing that we have mentors, we have caregivers, we have people that may not be our parents, but they could be our parents, that took the time to be a person to walk in front of us and show us the path to follow. It's the importance of the imagery in Psalm 23 that David talks about the shepherd. The shepherd is not a part of the flock, but the shepherd leads the flock. The shepherd is a person with the stick in front of the grouping of lambs, of animals, or whatever that they know to look towards and to follow. They understand that if they follow the shepherd, the shepherd will take them to a place of comfort, a place of understanding, and a place of care. It is my deepest heart felt desire that each of you know a shepherd in your life. In my life, there's been so many beautiful people from Palmer Lowry to Jim McGinnis to Robert McMillan to Brian Kent that have been some kind of shepherd in my life. And they were very crucial in very crucial moments that they were the ones carrying the staff at the time that I could look towards and follow and get to the places where I needed to be. As we go through Psalm 23, we get to another section. And it talks about, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because, and if you know it, say it with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The shepherd carrying the staff gives the flock a place to redirect their focus, and they're not paying attention to the trials or the tribulations. They are looking forward to the shepherd so that they can follow the image of peace to get to where they want to be. I've already shared with you through my lifelong testimony how it took me six years to get through a three-year graduate school course to get my Master's of Divinity. I've already shared with you about the 10 times I went to the Board of Ordination before that I was past 30. There's all these things that happen in our lives that feel like setbacks, but they're not setbacks. They are other opportunities to look forward towards a shepherd to get to where you need to be. We have areas of growth that we can excel at when we find the ones with the mothering actions to look at instead of staring at the problems. When we stare at the problems, we feel depleted, defeated, and less than. But when we share and stare at the image of hope, the shepherd walking before us carrying the staff, we don't see the setbacks, we see possibility. And every time we see possibility, it spurs hope, and hope spurs growth. I hope in your lives 
that you have a mentor that is the shepherd that displays the mothering actions that help you feel hopeful. When we find the connection to these dear friends, it helps us celebrate the last part of Psalm 23. And the last part of Psalm 23, yea, though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we will fear no evil for thy rod and my staff, they comfort me. And then you make of me lay down beside still waters. You prepare a table for me in front of my enemies. And lo, I will be with you even until the end of the age. All of the beautiful imagery that shares when we're able to connect, to follow, to focus on the shepherds in our lives. The shepherds that display the mothering actions of love, hope, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control, the fruits of the Spirit, we can find a place that we can just sit down and rest. If you have a mother in your life that you celebrate every day, happy mothering day. If you didn't have such a close, strong relationship, but you still have that shepherd in your life that guided you to a place of hope, happy mothering day. And I just ask that you give yourself a chance to sit back, reflect, look at your lives so that you can see those shepherds and have a moment to sit down and once again to say all together, Happy Mothering Day. Day. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen.